welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and along for the ride uh, tonight is Mitch Grawl and Dean Chambers. How you doing tonight, fellas? Very good. All right. So, uh, busy, busy, busy weekend. So, we had NCAA college football. We had NFL football. We had PCFL football, and the big one, we had the PNFL kicking off our new season. So we are going to run through the PNFL. Wasn't it so nice, everybody? Oh, it yes. It was, a, it was a sporgy weekend. Sport, well, you know, you can figure it out. It was a sporgy weekend. So <laughs> that's something. Never mind. That's another sidebar story. I'm not going to say anything. So if I say anything more, someone's going to take it and run with it. So it was, it was a sports filled weekend. Let's go with that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to run. It, it, was all, it was almost sporgasmic. Yes, very much so. Very much so. So we're going to run through the PNFL games first, and in our middle segment, we're going to talk about the current status of uh, what's going on over in the PCFL as it's winding down its inaugural season, and uh, we'll do a little comparison contrast between the PNFL and the PCFL, and then in the last segment, you know what we do. We go through the week two games. So if you guys are ready... Uh, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to start off. The player of the week in the PNFL was Tua Tagliovoia. I know I always get that name, get it spelled wrong or pronounce hey, it wrong. Can you say that name again one more time? Tua. Tua. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, from Minnesota. So uh, he was our player of the week. So first game on our list uh, for the new season. We have the New York Jets hosting the New England Patriots. And uh, Mac Jones was the player of the game. And the Jets ended up taking this one 30 to 14. We're going to start this one off with Mitch. All right. Well, let me be the first one to say it. The Jets do what the Jets do. Ding, ding. Drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> ring the bell. Ring the bell. There no. you go. I, um, I'm actually one of the people who voted that New England uh, would uh, be the second-place team in this division, and obviously there's 15 more games to go. Um, but I think uh, we definitely can confirm that after this week, New England will, New England will not be first place in the division. Uh, they got um, they got dominated uh, by, by the Jets uh, pretty much all over. And, uh, you know, We'll, uh, well, so, so now they get to uh, try to take out Indianapolis and uh, Jacksonville for second place. But Jets start off rolling. So, um, I don't know. What do you think, Dean? Uh, what I'm thinking is uh, I'm going to issue a challenge here to the other three teams in the AFC East. Will you three just finally beat this team for once? I mean, good grief. They keep dominating season after season after season. They've won the division more times straight than any other team in any other division, probably in the history of the league. I mean, can one of you just step up and beat this team and win the division for change? I mean, in real life football, no team dominates that much, never has. It's ridiculous. Beat them finally. Figure out a way to do it. I mean, some tons of games come up with new plays, whatever you have to do. Just get the job done for crying out loud. So, how do you feel about the Jets winning all the time, Dean? <laughs> Next game up, we have Houston taking on Pittsburgh. Um, the player of the game was Travis Etienne, from, uh, running back out of Houston. A very close, very tight, very good game as Houston took this one 10-7, to Dean. Well, if you like defense, you definitely would have liked this game. Pittsburgh has 17 first downs. Houston only had 18, and there was only 17 points scored in the entire game. We've seen games where one team scores more than 17 points in one quarter. I mean, there was no offense in this game. Or you can say the defense was great, but whatever it is, it was very low scoring. And uh, ultimately, ironically, as 
much as Mitch's team has had trouble with the kicking game at times, a field goal here won in the game. It could have gone into overtime at 7-7. All right. Coach. Well, I was very impressed with my new uh, rookie wide receiver, Franklin, who uh, I, I drafted, I think, in the first round, who uh, uh, was able to bring in 48 yards receiving. Uh, so I was very happy with that. Uh, led my team with 48 yards receiving. Led the team. Uh, yeah, neither team could do anything on offense. Uh, as I've talked about before, Donovan's team uh, plays very good defense. And so if you're not ready to count, you know, obviously counteract that and, and hold hold him down, you, you will have no chance to win. So this, this one obviously could have gone either way. I'll say home field uh, helped us out, and um, I'll take the win. But uh, good, but good game, uh, Donald. All right. Next game up, we have Indianapolis taking on the Chargers. I think we had all picked uh, L.A. to win this game. Uh, player of the game was Kenny Pickett, as Indy took this one 30-16. Mitch. Well, you know, I've already seen in Los Angeles the Chevron trucks backing into the stadium because uh, the, the Chargers are already saying they're going to tank the rest of the season. We will see. It seems as if whenever they tank, they tend to play better. Um, but um, yeah, the Indianapolis looked good. Uh, they looked really good. Uh, so maybe this will be the team to give uh, the Jets a bit of a challenge. I know that they beat them last year uh, or split with them last year. Maybe this is the team that can give them at least some sort of push in the AFC East this year. All right. Dean. Yeah, I was reading a comment that Steven said on WhatsApp that he put together an offense to try to try to emulate what the Chargers are doing in real life and I think maybe that might be just something where we try to do things that are more realistic but don't always have the same result in Football Pro, and uh, that might be part of the issue here. Indianapolis played, played very solid defense as well, and uh, maybe that team is going to uh, put up a challenge this season to the Jets in the AFC East. We'll see. Well, they're definitely off to a nice start, so we'll see uh, where it goes from here. Next game up, we have Jacksonville hosting Denver, another team that's starting out strong. Uh, player of the game was Clayton Thorsten for Denver as Denver took this one over Jacksonville 24-10. to 10. Dean. Yeah, Denver changed back to the old starting quarterback that had been starting for him when this team used to be the Saints, and that seemed to work out pretty well. He went 24 of 27 of 41 for 283 yards, three touchdowns, and a single interception. And uh, they played pretty good defense as well and held Jacksonville to 10 points. So, uh, you know, I think this Denver team is uh, going to be competitive and have a chance in the, in the AFC West. Mitch. Yeah, Denver's defense uh, looked good starting out here week one, and they were very, very good last year. I think, what, second in the league in scoring defense? Hey, they might have finished first. I, I, I'd have to go back and look. Um, but I know they were in top three in scoring defense regardless. So uh, starting off strong there, Jacksonville uh, could not do anything uh, offensively, averaging just 3.8 yards of play. Uh, I mean, goodness gracious, yeah. So um, – a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, review and contemplation by Jacksonville this week. All right. Next up, we have Washington taking on the New York Giants. And Darius Geis was the um, halfback or running back for Washington. That was player of the game. As Washington took this one 22 to 10, Mitch. Yeah, another defensive game. I mean, both teams uh, only had 15 first downs, and so uh, I know that giant fumble played a big role um, in, uh, in 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 their downfall. And you know, they had two fumbles; they lost one. But um, 
Again, you look at the average per play, even for both teams, 3.7 yards for the Giants, only 4.8 for Washington. Um, not going to score a lot of points so uh, when when offenses are, are are doing are doing that. So um, you know, I don't know, Bean. What do you think? Yeah, the, the Washington is always a tough team to, to beat, and uh, you know the Giants certainly tried hard and made an effort, but um, the running game didn't quite show up for the Giants. Twenty eight yards net rushing yards total is now getting it done against the Giants. Um, usually, the Giants are much better at running the ball than that. I mean, none of their none of their running backs had had more than twenty six yards total, and I think that's the yeah, it was a fairly low-scoring game, more defensive-oriented, but especially in a game like that, you have to run the, go- run the ball much more effectively, and, and Washington did have 109 yards of rushing, so that makes a difference. Okay. Las Vegas hosting Philadelphia. Very good game, very close game. Um, player of the game is uh, is uh, J.J. McCarthy, rookie quarterback. Uh, for Philly, as they took this game twenty nine to twenty eight, Dean. Yeah, this is a tough game. This score went back and forth in this game. The two teams traded least. I thought the Raiders would win this game, but Philadelphia scored near the end. And yeah, it's interesting that player of the game threw two interceptions, but then the Raiders starting quarterback also threw two interceptions. So we had quite a few turnovers in this game as well as. Uh, Quite a bit of scoring, and uh, that's what happened. The home team got beat by one point, twenty-nine to twenty-eight. Mitch, yeah, this is this was a wild game. If uh, you didn't have a chance to watch it, definitely worth the watch. But um, you know, the Philadelphia getting that the last second touchdown to, to win it was uh, was exciting as we watched it live on Discord on Friday Night Lights. Coming to you again this week, but um, anyhow, I uh, this stood out to me from a stat standpoint is that Philadelphia definitely uh, used the air raid offensive profile this week. You know, throwing 64 passes to only 11 rushing attempts, and they're lucky they got some big plays uh, out there. I know they were like they were you know, chunking the ball with some pass medium quite a bit. Because they only completed 44% of the passes. <laughs> and like you said, Dean, they had two interceptions. So usually you see somebody with 44% completion, two picks. You're like, oh, boy, that's a bad day. But they had over 412 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, so, um, hey, if you're not going to be accurate, at least throw it deep, you know. So <laughs> that's, that's the only thing I can say. So uh, that's all. All right, next up we have Minnesota hosting Atlanta. Uh, As we mentioned for Player of the Week overall in the PNFL, Tua Tagliavoa, I think I said that right that time. Uh, I'll, hey, look, whatever. From Minnesota, uh, he ended up becoming Player of the Game. Um, This is going to be an interesting conversation. This was... All Minnesota as they took this one forty-five to thirteen. Mitch. Well, yeah, uh, Tua Tamaroa had a had a strong game <laughs> this week. <laughs> had a strong game. Uh, you know, four touchdowns, three seventy-three through the air, nearly you know seventy percent completion. So obviously, uh, Minnesota's pass offense was, was dialed in. Um, uh, pretty well. I, I'll, I'll just say this: Be, being a coach that has lost the game forty-nine to nothing in week one, uh, and still made the playoffs, uh, you know, don't count Atlanta out yet. Uh, we'll give them a few weeks to see if they get the deep and get some things uh, worked out. But uh, sometimes it's week one. Uh, you're going to have some crazy, uh, funky games, and uh, you know, Minnesota's good. Obviously, made Super Bowl last year, so. I'm not saying that, you know, that's not the case, but, um, you know, don't, don't throw the towel in yet if you're Atlanta. But, uh, Dean, how are you feeling? Well, what I'm feeling is this game feels like the start of the 2033 season all over again. When I started the season 0-10, and 10, it just feels that way. Don't be surprised if it is. But the game itself, 
Um, my offense didn't stop anything, and the and I mean my defense didn't stop anything. The offense made up for it by not doing much or anything. I had one drive late in the game that scored a touchdown and a, uh, a two point conversion that was not made. The other score was late in the second half on a pass razzle dazzle lob play that you know went I think like 61 yards for a touchdown. Kind of a lucky play. So basically, my offense sustained just one driving the entire game, and uh, let me look at the stats. Yeah, just as I thought, Minnesota only punted once. So my offense produced one legitimate drive, and my defense created one defensive stop. That's not going to win you many games. Yeah, I don't think on the analytics that's what they want want to see. Yeah. yeah, even my dogs agree. <laughs> Next game <laughs> up. Next game up, we have San Francisco hosting Chicago. Uh, player of the game was Sam Darnold from Chicago as uh, Chicago took this one 31 to, four, uh, 31 to 24. Sorry, 31 24. Dean. Yeah, this is a pretty close game. San Francisco really gave them a challenge here and ultimately fell short by, by a touchdown. But San Francisco was 9 of 15 for third down conversions over 400 yards. How did they lose this game? Well, they they fumbled two two balls away and had an interception that three turnovers. You can't do that against Chicago. But uh, otherwise, they might have had a chance. All right. Mitch. Yeah, that's what stood out to me, too. I mean, those three turnovers definitely killed them. And they had another fumble, too. I mean, they just had butterfingers all over the place um, for San Francisco. And really, it's kind of surprising that Chicago, you know, wasn't able to find a way to, you know, have an even wider spread there. So, uh, you know, San Francisco's defense definitely st- uh, stood up when they needed to on uh, in, in some of those situations. But... Um, they seem to see how these two teams go this year. Uh, I know Chicago is perennial, you know, top four team typically, and uh, San Francisco, like I said, they get the butterfingers uh, fixed, and you know, they 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 might have an opportunity for a strong season. All right, last game of week one in the PNFL, we have Seattle hosting Green Bay. Uh, Derek Forrest, uh, safety from Green Bay, was the player of the game. Um, the unplayer of the game was Seattle's kicker. That was one for three. Um, as Seattle dropped this one to Green Bay, sixteen to ten. Mitch, and don't be blaming a kicker for an offense. He had one job. He had one job. And all he gained 291 yards of offense. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, yeah, this was uh, this was a fun game uh, for for those who uh, were with us live on Discord on Friday Night Lights. Uh, we had a lot of laughs during this game, particularly at uh, some of the uh, sideline play designs that uh, the Green Bay coach had put together for this game and. Just how ineffective those plays were. <laughs> so anyway, we had we had some fun uh, watching this one live uh, Friday night. Um, but uh, you know, Green Bay, you know, tried to make sure that they uh, stay out of the Sacco Bowl or the Sacco Trophy this year. So uh, we'll see what these two teams do the rest of the season. All right, Dean. Yeah, I remember in Discord, this game was almost built like it was an early season soccer ball. And uh, it was another low-scoring game. It was tied at 10 in, uh, in regulation, and neither team did much in offense. And uh, I believe, if I understand this right, that kicker that missed the two field goals for Seattle has uh, found himself on the unemployment line. And uh, You would be correct. <laughs> yeah, so kind of a tough spot to be in, I guess, to uh, miss two field goals on any team, but miss two field goals on a team that only scored 10 points in regulation. 
Well, I think of it like this. Um, the first one he missed, um, it was, yeah, that could have been the game winner. Um, the way everything had played out. Uh, the second one was in overtime. I think he was, I think it was like a, the 20 yard line. So some, something, some chintzy cheap, you know, chip shot and indoors in a dome, your mm-hmm. home stadium, and you just shanked it. it. It wasn't a slight, you know, slight off to the side or it bounced off the goal. You just straight up shanked it. I mean, it. as soon as it took off, I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, that was pretty much it. And, um, you know, would like to thank him for going through training camp and everything else. But, um, you know, we wish him luck in the future. Maybe um, he can take his talents somewhere else, maybe to Houston or maybe Atlanta. But, uh, you know, we wish him the best of luck. He can go to the He can go to the PCFL. Well, actually, uh, he can't go back to college because uh, I think he was like five or six years in the league or something like that. Uh, I don't know. He, he's well, been. He's going to go to the UFL then. There you go. He can go. Someone in this league has been talking about all the wind and the domes. We even turned. Oh, okay. We even turned the air conditioning off for him. Okay. We turned the air conditioning off, and we gave fans <laughs> out. Maybe we should have told the fans not to not to wave their little hand fans they had. I don't know, but yeah, he's gone. So that was the problem. It's too hot in the in the dome. Uh, he can't. He can't kick field goals when it's eighty-five degrees in there. Well, you know, we try to make everything ideal for him, but hey, best of luck to him in the future. You know, we, uh, you know, there may be another opportunity for him with someone else down the line, but um, we're going in a different direction. So, New, New England might pick him up. New yeah, England there you go. So, all right, that was week one. So we're gonna pivot on over to. Um, what's going on in our collegiate league? We have the information on the PCFL. Uh, currently right now in the PCFL, going through, uh, we're going into week 10. Um, currently, the standings are uh, UCLA and Washington in the Pacific Division are sitting at 6-3. and three. USC is at 4-5. and five. Oregon is still winless at 0-9. Over in the Central Division, we have Colorado at six and three, Ohio State at six and three, Oklahoma four and five, Michigan three and six, and Notre Dame at one and eight. Over in the Eastern Conference, we have Texas at seven and two, Florida State five and four, along with Clemson and Penn State. Over in the Southern Division, we have Florida. At seven and two, LSU at six and three, Tennessee at four and five, Arkansas and Georgia are both back at three and six. The top rankings that we have right now, um, we have Texas, LSU, Florida, Washington, UCLA, Florida State, Ohio State, and Colorado at seven, Clemson at nine, Penn State. Tennessee, Georgia, USC, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Michigan, Notre Dame, and Oregon. Again, the top eight teams, uh, yeah, top eight go make it to the playoffs. So that's uh, Texas, LSU, Florida, Washington, UCLA, Florida State, Ohio State, and Colorado at this time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Uh, for the analysis, uh, we're going to start with – we'll start with Mitch, and then we'll let the commish talk, uh, the PCFL. So, well, Mitch. I think, I think, well, I think Colorado might uh, actually try to get uh, Brian to go coach their real team after watching them, uh, the real Buffaloes, play this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, but um, I know we'll talk about this in a few minutes, but uh, uh, about the gameplay and all, so I won't comment uh, on that, but – no, I know my team is is pretty much done after um, to completely, uh, you know, bumbling around and losing the last couple of games. So, uh, George is pretty much out, and uh, you know, we'll we'll see how how uh, how some of these things pan out. But it, it is definitely interesting watching uh, 
uh, PNFL games uh, this past week uh, after watching, you know, the last seven or eight weeks of PC NFL games, that's for sure. But I'll let Dean comment more uh, on the league. Yeah, we're going into week 10 games this weekend, and we're looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, three human coach teams on one side that I think will uh, go into the end of the postseason with some momentum, UCLA, Washington, and Colorado. And on the other side, I think probably the best team is is, is Texas. Florida is a CPU team, the 7-2. and two. I don't know if they're going to last long in the playoffs. Then we have a handful of teams, a couple of CPU teams in Clemson and Florida State that are five and four. Um, Penn State is has a new coach who uh, I don't know how much time and effort he'll put into uh, coaching that team. If time and effort is put in, that team might grab one of those playoff spots and have a chance in postseason. And my team is four and five and has an outside shot at getting into the playoffs. I'm not going to predict it will, but it could. LSU is six and three, and the new coach is just kind of riding on the uh, the CPU PPPs, and that could be a good decision. The team is six and three and has a chance to be in it, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. We have twelve game regular season, so we have three more weeks of the regular season. Then we'll have an eighteen playoff um, tournament that will decide who wins it, and then we'll go into off season and, and recruiting. So. Um, going into our next, uh, part, I guess, sub, um, middle segment, one of the things that we talked about in the pre-show a little bit was the comparison, um, or the contrast between the games in the PNFL and the games in the PCFL. Now, <clears throat> the main rules for this was basically we're using the same plays in the PNFL that we, in the PCFL that we use in the PNFL. The one thing that we have noticed is because the the um, stats on each players for a di- different attributes, you see a big difference between what's in the PNFL and what's in the PCFL. So um, what I'd like to do is if we can talk about the differences between the two leagues on how um, the play calling, either the play calling or actually how the plays or ran the differences between the two leagues. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Dean on that one. Yeah, I think the differences we're noticing that um, the the defensive players don't cover the the offensive players quite as closely, especially in the passing game where receivers are a little bit more likely to be open and sometimes tackles are broken by running backs or there's a bit more run after the catch. And I think that's because – Although the ratings are fairly close as far as offense and defense, um, there's more of a spread between starting level players, backups, and third string players. So you can get mismatches where you might have a a wide receiver two being covered by a CB5 or something like that in some plays. And then the differences there are more stark, and that's where you see more differences in in the plays that happen and tackles broken. And, you know, it's – you can put linebackers on the outside to stop the top sweeps, and sometimes they cover it and sometimes they break the tackle. So, you know, we're seeing – and we're seeing a bit more scoring in the league overall. I'm sure Mitch can say a lot more about those differences as well. I think you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, – just. I guess I know we've talked about this before on, on the show, so, I mean, this isn't like a new – oh, look, there's a difference. Uh, but I guess it was, you know, after watching, you know, the last eight or so weeks of PCFL games uh, and then having our, you know, PNFL start this past week, uh, it just made it like, wow, it's almost like watching football in a phone booth and watching the PNFL games. And when you look at, you know, the scores and the stats, I mean, I'm, I'm actually putting together the um, the newsletter for, um, for this week, uh, the um, PNFL News. And uh, it's interesting how, and granted, this is just week one, right? So it, lots of stuff can happen. But just looking down the list um, of, um, like, uh, total yards and, and whatnot, for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Half the league had under 100 total yards rushing this week at the PNFL. And one, two, three, 
four, basically five of those teams uh, had 50 yards or less. Um, it's, I don't know if it's the lack of trying to run. I haven't gone back to see the number of attempts, um, but, um, or, or what, but then even in the passing game, um, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight teams, maybe half the league had less than 200 yards, uh, passing. And then we had one other team that had 212, you know, it's so great. It's week one. Take it like a grain of salt. We all know that. Uh, but uh, I tell you, if uh, we talk about, you know, wanting to open up the scoring just a little bit or opening up the offense a little bit, I, 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 am, I think we've got the right plays because we've seen those same plays in the PCFL. I, I think it's, it, it's definitely that, that ratings um, – that the ratings is what's stifling uh, any of this, the offense that uh, folks are, have been talking about. So that's it. That's all I'll say. I don't think there's anything we haven't already said before, but it just kind of stood out uh, a little bit more having you know, P NFL games this week. So that's I'll point out something real quick. In the PCFL last week, 12 of the 18 teams, that's two third, <clears throat> two thirds had 100 or more yards, and some of those had 200 or more yards of rushing. So it's just a quick difference. I just counted yeah. that while Mitch was talking. As yeah. most of the teams in the league having more than 100 yards of rushing. Yeah. So would you say that by comparing it to the actual NCAA um, football and the NFL football, would you say that could you kind of draw parallels between the two as far as how the play is going between the two where – in the NCAA and in the P, in the PCFL, you see these high scores. Um, in the NFL and the PNFL, it's much more tighter, even though they do, you know, they do have plays that are interchangeable between the two leagues. Would you agree with that? Hey, hey ask ask us ask the Carolina Panthers if they uh, thought that the the, the uh, New Orleans Saints plays were. I, I, I think uh, I think the Carolina Panthers in real life is a PCFL team playing a PNFL team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, anyway, that wasn't yeah, the question. That wasn't. Yeah, the question. That, that's I'll true. Scores quick from last week. Yeah. I'll just read you the scores real quick: forty-two to 10, 29 to twenty-four, twenty-eight to ten, thirty-four to twenty-four, thirty-six to twelve, thirty-six to twenty-three, thirty-five to twenty-nine. 34 to 28 and 23 to five. I mean, those selling pretty reasonable scores, don't they? Yeah, I, I'd say so. Yeah, pretty much. Not but, but, but I will, I will say to your point, Mark. You know, obviously in real life, right? The college football is, you know, more wide open than it is in, in the NFL because you know there are, you know, you've got 18 to 20. Well, nowadays, 18 to 25 year olds playing college football. You know, and you know, there's a, obviously a wide range of physical attributes and whatnot that are out there um, versus in the NFL, where again, it is much more. You know, the talent it's level is, is is more similar. But um, it's it is that part of it. But you know, it is interesting just seeing it play out. Just how tweaking the ratings with the same plays, basically. Um, how this is so much of a difference in the in the gameplay. But the 25 year olds playing a real life college football is temporary thing. All those plays with COVID, you know, extra COVID senior years, that won't go on going yeah. forward. But you look at some of the scores in the PNL this weekend, you know, there was a 10 to 7 score, there was there was a 24 to 10, there was a 22 to 10, there was uh, 16 to 10, you know, more lower scored, some of them. I mean, there were a couple that were a bit higher, but generally the scoring has been down, and we and we saw that last season as well. The scoring has been down yep. overall. Okay. All right. I think we wrapped this one up, and actually, yeah, I we're. We, I think we beat that dead horse. So yeah, I think so, and we're and actually <laughs> we are on uh, we are on track for our show this week, so. Uh, yeah. We're going to pivot on over to our last segment, uh, which obviously is the week two games. Everyone gets their lead pipe lock in. Um, 
Rich Sporting Books, those numbers are already out, so we're going to jump right into this. Uh, first game on the list, we have the Houston Oilers hosting the New York Jets. They are given the Jets six and a half. We are going to start with Dean. Yeah, this week the Jets are not going to do what the Jets do. The home team is going to play a solid game and, yes, beat that team, and I am predicting Houston will win. All right, Coach. I will uh, take the cheers from the Atlantic coach, and I will package those in with what I can hopefully find a playbook to uh, score and move the ball a little bit this week. Um, and um, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I got beat pretty bad last year in the regular season by – the Jets after the playoff win against them. So I'm sure they'll be wanting to continue to uh, keep me down, but I'll take the Houston Oilers and we'll see what happens. All right. Um, well, you know, just like Mitch loves his Vikings, that's how I am with the Jets. I'm going to take the Jets this week, but I don't think it's going to be by six and a half. I think it may be like a three point spread. Um, I'd say no more than a three point spread. I think um well we know the Jets are gonna prepare. We always we, we all know how well Mitch prepares, so uh I'm gonna give the edge to the Jets on this one by three. Next game on the list we have the New England Patriots taking on the Indianapolis Colts. They are giving the Colts seven and a half. Mitch. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Colts. I thought they looked really strong this past week. Um, it's hard to tell with New England. I mean, they played the Jets, and that's always been a tough game for them. Uh, but I'm, I'm going with Indy. All right. Dean. Yeah, I think uh, I think the Colts are going to win this, given that he, the coach of the, of the team absolutely despises the Patriots in real life, and I think he'll be motivated to beat them in the PNFL. And uh, – I think Indianapolis will win and will exceed that seven and a half spread. All right. Um, I'm going to go along with you guys. I'm going to go with the Colts. Um, I think that Mox is going to have to step up on this one, um, but that um, he's got to show me something this week. He has to uh, either at a minimum put on a much better showing at best, he's going to have to win this game or his season could be heading into disaster, uh, disaster territory after week two. So I'm going to go with the Colts um, until Moss can show me that he can uh, pull off an upset, which I know he's capable of doing. But is this the week? Um, I don't think it's going to be the week for it. So Next game up, we have the Steelers hosting the Raiders. They are giving the Steelers seven and a half. Uh, we're going to go with Mitch. Ooh, uh, I, I tell you what, uh, playing uh, that uh, team last week, I, I don't know um, if I would be willing to bet against them uh, right, uh, right away. So uh, I'm going to have to go with Pittsburgh at home, getting that rebound win. All right, D. That's what I say. Not so fast, my friend. The Raiders are going to win this weekend. I have no doubt about it. Steelers will start off zero and two. Um, I'm going to take the Steelers on this one, and I'm going to go ahead and throw my lock in early. I'm going to take the Steelers for this one for the win, and they're going to get themselves back on track. So. Um, you know you just put a lead pipe curse on them. No, my name's not Dean. So, yeah. Well, it will be this week. <laughs> Next game up, we have the Seahawks hosting the Chargers. They are, whoo, they're giving the Chargers nine and a half. Dean. Yeah, that spread is too big. I don't know what that's based on. I'm not sure that. The Chargers are going to be tanking, but I think the home team is going to uh, going to have something to say about that, and I think the home team will pull off the upset win. All right. Mitch? Woo. Well, hopefully for Seattle, Los, uh, Los Angeles will 
you know, here's some of those new Shuggy screen passes uh, that worked so great uh, last week. That'll definitely help Seattle out. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with Los Angeles, but I have a feeling it's going to be a much closer game than that nine, nine and a half point spread. All right. Well, you know what I'm doing. Go Hawks. You know, got to do it. And um, Chargers are a good team, but uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to do what we have to do and put our best foot forward. So, so Next. Seattle does what Seattle does. There you go. Uh, yeah. Well, no, 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 because people probably can take. Gonna, we're probably gonna lose. People are gonna take it. Ah, 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 ah. You sounding like Philly's coach now? Don't start no mess. Oh. Next game up, we have the Cardinals taking on the Redskins. They are giving the Cardinals six and a half. Mitch, uh, I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. All right, Dean. Yeah, I know how strong this team is and how tough they are to beat, but, you know, there have been times when Jerry's done it, and I think this will be one of those times. I'm I'm picking the upset. I'm picking Washington for the win here. Okay. Um, I'm going to pick the Cardinals on this one. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to pick the Cardinals. Next game up, we have Philly hosting the Giants. They are giving the Eagles seven and a half. Dean. Yeah, I think this is going to be a close game. It might be closer than the spread indicates, but it may not be. It depends on what happens. Um, I would look at the quarterback play between these two quarterbacks, and we have the rookie, J.J. McCarthy, playing for uh, for the Eagles, playing at home, and we have uh, Daniel Jones, who has been prone to making some mistakes starting with the Giants, unless he makes the switch. But until I see some – until I see the Giants play better, I'm, I'm going to be picking – I pick pick Philadelphia to win this one. All right. Mitch. Uh, you know, last year, if I remember – or last season, if I remember correctly, uh, the Giants beat Philadelphia by, what, 50 points or something like that? Or like yeah. 50. yeah. I think yeah. It, was, it was a yeah. pretty lopsided game. I um, I have a feeling, even though we know that uh, the coach for Philadelphia, I think sometimes likes to brag that he doesn't spend a lot of time on his games, uh, I have a feeling this one might be a little personal. I don't think he wants to get beat by 50 again. So I'm going to go with Philadelphia. All right. Um, I agree with you on that. I think I'm going to go with Philly this time. Um, I think that spread is too big. It'll be a much smaller spread. But um, I'm going to take Philly. I'm going to go with Philly this week. So next one up, we have the Broncos hosting the Falcons. They are giving the Broncos 10 and a half. Mitch. Ooh. Oh, man, that one. Oh, boy. Well, um, you know, it's hard to say. You know, I know week ones, like I said earlier, sometimes are a mirage. And um, I know Dean had a tough week this past week. But one thing that has been consistent now for several weeks and crossing over from season to season is Denver can play defense. Uh, and so I think they're going to keep that score low enough to where, you know, they potentially could uh, could win the game, you know, twenty to ten or or seventeen seven. So, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Denver. All right, Coach. Yeah, I think it'll probably be a close game, closer than that spread. It'll probably be a very low scoring game. So, we'll see what happens. All right. Um... Uh, I got to go with the Broncos on this one. Um, another game, which I think the spread's going to be is too big. I think you're going to learn from uh, last week's game, and you're going to go ahead and probably throw in a whole new set of plays and change your tactic up going in. I think week one games is always a toss-up. Um, everyone's trying to fill each other out. 
see what they're going to do and then take the notes, um, you know, going into the following week. So even though I'm going to give the nod to the Broncos, it's going to be much closer than that 10 and a half point spread. Last two games we have on the list, we have the 49ers hosting Mitch Grawls Vikings at eight and a half. Dean. I think we know where he's putting his lead pipe, lead pipe lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the 49ers are a solid team and they're very competitive, but they they are playing the defending NFC champions, who I think will probably win this game. All right. Mitch. I'm going to go with Minnesota. You know it. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I guess we're going to be in concurrence. I'm going to go with Minnesota on this one as well. You're not putting a lead pipe on this? Yeah, I said, I will. You know what? Yeah, put the lead pipe on it. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, I, I, yeah, let's put the lead pipe on that. And I didn't see you putting a lead pipe lock on Jacksonville or Green Bay, so. No, yeah, let's, go, uh, let's go with that lead pipe on Minnesota. All right. Uh, last game up, we have Jacksonville hosting the Packers. They are giving Jacksonville four and a half. Um, Mitch. Well, you know, watching that um, Green Bay offense last week, I was impressed that they actually had 20 completions. Now, granted, 10 of those were to that new screen pass, which went nowhere. Uh <laughs> but, uh, I have a feeling Stoogie will make some adjustments. I, I'm going to take Green Bay. I'm going to take Green Bay this week. All right, Dean. You know, Mark, you should be a good. You should be a big fan of that new screen pass because now Mitch is going to be talking trash about that every week. Rather, than oh no, SC. he he's not. He's not going to give up that twenty that SC twenty seven toss. He ain't giving that one up. <laughs> he is not giving that one up. <laughs> Those that, that screen pass is a is second to that one, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're probably one could only help. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I think that uh, I think Shuggy's play is GB twenty seven screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh GB my close. goodness! All right, but for those of you keeping score at home, I have not put a lead five lock in anything yet, and because I'm putting it on this game. Green Bay is going to do some things in this game and win, and I'm putting a lead pipe lock in that. All right. And we know they like to do things in Green Bay. Yes, they They do. do. All right. So for me on this one, um, I'm going to take Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville is due for uh, some good things this season. I think this will be a start of it. So I'm going to take Jacksonville on this one. All right. So as we come to – Correct. Pick now? I said that pick is so not politically correct. Pick Jacksonville over Green Bay. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm picking Jacksonville because Green Bay's in my division. <laughs> Normally, I don't like to root for teams in my division. So, <laughs> if you take your pick, I think I think Jacksonville's going to do some. I think Jacksonville's going to get, you know, hopefully have a good season. I think it's going to start with Green Bay. So Jacksonville's going to do some things. You almost they, said they, it. They, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know if, uh, you know, if Green Bay is going to be doing their their herbal game plan or not. So you don't know what they're going to be doing, how they get their game plans going. But I'm going with well, Jacksonville this week. Well, all I know is that uh, Green Bay was playing some music, the secondhand smokers or the wine drinkers and sex smokers or stuff the last week. I don't know what. It was, mm-hmm. like, it was pretty mellow, I will say that. Yep. I think they... you said that thing was called cigarettes after sex. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that was it. I, I don't know what it is. I haven't looked into it. but Yeah, yeah. All right. So. As we come up to wrap up uh, week two games, uh, we're going to go around the table one last time, and we're going to start off with Dean. Well, I'll just say good luck to everyone in the game this weekend, and let's uh, hope our offenses will uh, score a few more points this weekend. All right. 
Mitch, any final words for you take us home? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good week one. You know, you never know what to expect in week one. We all know that. So uh, the biggest improvements are from week one to week two. So I expect there to be some more big games. And as of right now, there could be a potential change to this. But as of this moment of recording, um, we will uh, still be having Friday Night Lights this week. Um, so there could be a subject to change because I will be out of town, but I think I will be able to uh, get on there Friday night and uh, do some streaming. So looking forward to it. All right. Any final words, sir, before you take us home? That's it. You know what? You're right. The only thing left now is, <laughs> is let's get it. Forgot about that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was thinking about how am I going to stream these games? <laughs> <laughs> 